on plan for Syria. Last night, President Obama addressed the nation, arguing the political reasons and strategy behind a military strike on Syria. He said if the latest attempts at diplomacy fail, the United States military is prepared to carry out a strike, but diplomacy should be given more time. On Tuesday, Syria agreed to a Russian proposal that it would surrender its chemical weapons. The president instructed all Americans to watch the videos online of the chemical weapons attacks in Syria when deciding whether they support a military strike if this last attempt at disarming Syria fails. 9-11 ceremony to remain politics free. This morning's ceremony at Ground Zero will be in... Uh, New York's, or rather, uh, this morning's ceremony at Ground Zero will be New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg's last in office. In his time as mayor, he has managed to keep the memorials free of political opportunists, not allowing politicians to speak at the memorials. Today's ceremony will be no different, with the focus on victims and their families. Also at today's ceremony, relatives will read the names of the 3,000 people who died in the September 11th terrorist attacks, as well as those of the victims of the 1993 Trade Center attack. Apple announces two new iPhones. Apple Computers yesterday introduced the latest incarnations of its iPhone line, the 5S and the 5C. The 5C is a plastic-based model, more durable foam that will come in bright colors such as pink, green, and yellow. The 5S is a higher-end model that features performance upgrades, improved camera, and fingerprint identifiers. And those are the things you need to know and the news headlines for this Wednesday. We'll have more news from the CBS World News Desk coming up in just a few minutes. Right now, though, what do you say we take a look at that weather forecast? Winter weather warning right now. Here's a live look at the Fox 6 snow stick. This is out on the weather deck. <laughs> And our weather forecast today is brought to us by the good folks at the Weather Channel and weather.com. And this round of heat peaks across the region today with highs generally in the 80s to mid 90s. Some record highs are possible. The only cool spot across the region will be in uh, northern Maine. We'll talk about the northeast part of the country, by the way, where highs remain in the mid 70s to lower 80s. A cold front ends the heat as it drops through tomorrow. That front is forecast to be in the southeast part of Canada by today, but it still triggers showers and thunderstorms from western New York to north New England. Severe thunderstorms, packing damaging wind gusts and hail are also possible in the same areas. Tomorrow, the severe threat extends to the whole region as a cold front pushes through. Main severe threats are damaging wind gusts and hail again tomorrow. Here in the Midwest, well, today is the last day of the hot days across the Midwest and Central Plains. High temperatures will reach the 90s once again from Kansas to the lower Great Lakes region as well as Ohio Valley. A few record highs are possible, especially from Missouri to Central Indiana. Relief is on the way as a cold front finally pushes southward through the uh, Central Plains and Midwest later today. Scattered showers and thunderstorms are expected along the boundary from Nebraska and North Kansas to the lower Great Lakes and Ohio Valley. Severe thunderstorms producing damage and wind gusts and hail are possible in northern Illinois, northern Indiana, northern Ohio, and southern Michigan. North of the cold front, temperatures will cool with highs in the 70s and 80s. Even cooler temperatures will move in by the end of the week and over the weekend, with highs expected to be in the 60s and 70s. Out west, heavy showers and thunderstorms will continue to produce flash flooding in uh, Colorado and New Mexico through the end of the week. Rainfall should average from 1 to 3 inches through Friday. Locally higher rainfall amounts of 3 to 6 inches are possible. Uh, spottier showers and thunderstorms could also produce some flash flooding in Nevada and Utah. Hot temperatures are the weather story across the northwest. Highs should be in the uh, upper 80s to lower 100s range from Saturday from now through Saturday in Washington Oregon and parts of Idaho. Seattle's forecast to reach the lower 90s, while Portland sweats it out in the upper 90s for today. The hottest temperatures are forecast to occur in East Washington and East Oregon. A cold front finally pushes 
in off the uh, Pacific on Saturday, bringing cooler temperatures for Sunday and early next week. And finally in the south, the majority of the region will be dry and hot once again today. Scattered thunderstorms are possible near the southern Appalachians in northeast and southern Florida and in the south as well as west Texas. Isolated thunderstorms bubble up in the afternoon from the heat from uh, central Tennessee to northern Texas. High temperatures once again are expected to reach in the upper 80s to lower 90s across the southeast Florida and western Texas. Hotter highs in the 90s to near 100 are expected elsewhere. And that is a brief gander at the weather forecast courtesy of the Weather Channel and weather.com. Still to come, we'll have Today in History in just a moment, as well as the CBS World News Roundup, along with market information just around the corner. Right now, though, what do you say we take a look at uh, celebrity birthdays for this Wednesday? And we'll take a look at birthdays for today. Come on, computer. Damn, Jim, what the hell is the matter with you? Other people have birthdays. Why are we treating yours like a funeral? Bones, I don't want to be lectured. Ooh, yeah. Very, very many happy reasons. And before we get to celebrity birthdays today, if you're celebrating a birthday today, happy birthday. Director Brian D. Palma of Mission Impossible, Scarface, The Untouchables, 73 today. Virginia Madison of Sideways and American Dreams is 52. Herrick Connick Jr., New American Idol, and a judge rather on New American Idol, is 46. And rapper Ludacris turns 36 today. Those are the celebrity birthdays that we have for you on this Wednesday. What do you say we go back in time a little bit more? Find out what happened on the state in history. Okay. So, uh, gather around. I'm the driver, because I'm the host of the show. And uh, we'll put this in over here. And we'll find out where the rest of today in history went. There it is. Okay. Are you ready? Well, let's get in the car. Close the door. <laughs> take a look at on this date in history in 1985 Pete Rose of the Cincinnati Reds set a new major league record of 4,192 career hits and a 2 to nothing win over the San Diego Padres at Cincinnati breaking Ty Cobb's old record of 4,191 set in 1928 and winning is a good sized bet for Pete no doubt for the rest of today in history we switch things over to the Associated Press Boom. There was a loud crashing sound, and then there was a pause for about a split second, and then there was like a scream or two, and then everyone just ran. Everybody, there was mass chaos. Uh, the smoke, the black smoke and fire. I checked, uh, and there are indications that it may have been a Boeing 767 out of Boston. like a train rumbling for maybe like 35 seconds and then there was like this pause and then boom hit with all the dust and it was black i mean pitch black i don't know if anybody could have survived being on the street at that time you can see the black smoke billowing out of the side of the Pentagon. It continues to billow out and cover much of the skyline here along the area, drifting along the, along the Potomac River, uh, casting a haze all over the Pentagon area.
it didn't look like there was a plane at all. It was just obliterated when it hit the ground. He told me he was putting a plan together that he and others were going to take back the airplane. And he said, you know, Dina, I think we can do it. It's up to us. And we will uh, strive now very hard to save as many people as possible and to send a message that the city of New York and the United States of America is much stronger than any group of barbaric terrorists. All of the suspects right now that I know that the U.S. is looking at are in the Middle East. And uh, frankly, we uh, have to put Osama bin Laden at the top of the list. We will make no distinction between the terrorists who committed these acts and those who harbored them. We've got to do something now and do it immediately. I mean, I, we're entitled to some semblance of security, some semblance of rationality, and I think that all died in New York. I've been in the city for years, and uh, I've never heard it as silent and as sad as I've heard it tonight. This city is in shock, and uh, unless you're here tonight, you don't quite comprehend it. Again, uh, forgive me if this is more for me than, than it is for people watching. Uh, I, I'm sorry, but... Uh, I just I, I have to go through this. I'm, uh, the, the reason we were attacked, the reason these people are dead, the, these people are missing and dead, and they weren't doing anything wrong. They were living their lives. They were going to work. They were traveling. They were doing what they normally do. Uh, as I understand it, and, and my understanding of this is vague at best, uh, another smaller group of people stole some airplanes and crashed them into buildings. And, and we're told that they were uh, zealots uh, fueled by religious fervor, religious fervor. And if you live to be a thousand years old, will that make any sense to you? Will that make any goddamn sense? <sighs> I'll tell you about a uh, thing that happened last night. Uh, there's a town in Montana by the name of Shoto. It's about 100 miles south of the Canadian border. And I know a little something about this town. And it's 1,600 people. 1,600 people. And it's a, a, an, an ag business community, which means farming and, and ranching. And Montana's been in the middle of a drought for, I don't know, three years. And, and if you've got no rain, you can't grow anything. And if you can't grow anything, you can't farm. And if you can't grow anything, you can't ranch because the cattle don't have anything to eat. And that's the way life is in this small town, 1,600 people. Last night at the high school auditorium in uh, Shoto, Montana, they had a rally, uh, home of the Bulldogs, by the way, uh, they, they had a rally uh, for New York City, and not just a rally for New York City, but a rally to raise money, to raise money for New York City. And, and if that doesn't tell you uh, everything you need to know about the, the spirit of the United States, then uh, I can't help you. This is a guided meditation on parenting. Begin by finding a comfortable, relaxed position. Let out whatever stress is in your body. It could be from the time you left your daughter's blouse in the dryer too long and it shrunk four sizes, or when you donated her private diary to the public library, or when you thought chaperoning the school dance meant actually dancing in the school dance. Whatever it is, let it go. The fire you started with that experimental dinner, let it go. The time you drove away from the gas pump with the gas pump, let it go. Three, very relaxed. Two, there you go. One. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. Every day I wake up at 5 a.m. to give dad his medicine. Every day, I wake up at 5 a.m. to give Dad his medicine. At 6 a.m., I make his breakfast. Every day, I wake up at 5 a.m. to give Dad his medicine. At 6 a.m., I make his breakfast. At 7 a.m., I shower. Every day, I wake up at 5 a.m. to give Dad his medicine. At 6 a.m., I make his breakfast. At 7 a.m., I shower. I start laundry at 8. At 10, we go for a walk. Every day, I wake up at 5 a.m. For those dealing with the daily struggles of caring for a loved one, we hear you. That's why AARP created a community with experts and other caregivers for advice, tips, and support. Together, 
Let's help each other. Be-